Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Secure and Defend section kickoff. We're going to try things a little bit differently than usual, uh, and we're going to walk you through just our high-level themes. Uh, you'll get a chance to hear from all the PMs in the team, and from there, we will then wrap up. To kind of get us started, uh, there are some really great things that happened since our last call. Uh, fuzz testing has moved to minimal maturity, and you can now see that uh, up in the list of items coming. Uh, same thing with our container host security. Both those things are now available, uh, fuzzing on .com, and both will be available uh, with the self-hosted. It only leaves one item left on the roadmap on the defense side, other than obviously improving our maturity. Uh, user and entity behavior analytics uh, is planned for next fiscal year. And in fact, it's also next calendar year as well. So look for updates on that starting early next year. That gives us a lot of categories that are now available. And the team is very excited to tell you about the great things that are coming out for their categories. To kind of set the stage for secure, we've set some strategic objectives. Uh, those include supporting offline environments, and we shipped our minimal uh, RMVC of that back in 1210. And that's really critical because our customers uh, predominantly end up being in offline environments, uh, being security minded people. And with that, uh, GitLab really gets into a position where we can support them because it's not common across the entire security space that products like ours work in an offline environment. Uh, we're also focused on providing application security testing leadership. Our goal was to try to get to complete maturity on, on categories like SaaS, DAS, and defense scanning by the end of the year. Um, based off the effort and the feedback we've received from customers, that's looking more like next fall. Uh, however, we're still releasing a lot of really great things along the way, and, and you'll hear a lot about that coming up here in a minute. And finally, dogfooding is very important at GitLab. If we can't make our own teams happy, we don't know how we would even make you happy. And I believe that it's very important for us to be dogfooding the secure functionality. And I can let you know that that started uh, with our security team and they've been rolling out support for container scanning, license compliance, uh, dependency scanning, and SAS. And starting uh, next uh, month, we're beginning to roll out that to the secure and defend engineering teams as well, with the plan of rolling it out to the remaining stages over the next couple of quarters. On defend, again, we've been able to ship three categories. Uh, we're making really great progress with things like container host security, focus on helping you have visibility, but also block attacks targeting your containers. And then we have uh, UEBA or user and NT behavior analytics coming next year. And with that, the strategic themes for Defend, we wanna focus on usability convention over configuration. And we actually shipped our initial policy management uh, option in 13.1. We have some really great things coming out in 13.4. The second part of that is having visibility first and protection second. And that's what we've been able to do with things like the initial shipment of our container network security Container host security is actually shipping with protection as an option, uh, but we do plan on giving you better visibility and that's gonna come in the form of our alert UI. Um, and then today you can see those logs if you use our export to seam option. So with that said, I'm going to kick it over to Sam White, who's going to give the update on Defend. Thanks, David. So in that theme of emphasizing usability and convention over configuration first, um, for 13.4, we're continuing our work on the policy editor, which will allow users to really um, edit their, their network policies in a way that hasn't been able to be done before. So right now, editing network policies is fairly difficult. Um, doing that in Kubernetes gives you no way to translate the YAML configuration into an English language sentence describing what the policy does. And when you edit these network policies, it's critical to make sure that those policies are configured correctly. Making a mistake would mean either that attackers could then uh, potentially have an access point into your cluster, or on the other hand, that you might end up blocking valid network traffic. So what we're attempting to do here is create a new policy editor UI that solves these problems, making it both easy and intuitive to edit policies. Um, in this uh, concept, you'll still be able to edit the YAML file directly, However, you'll see that we're also taking that one step further by giving you a plain English sentence that describes what the policy does that you can go through and edit. And you can still see the YAML being generated automatically, 
but you can also switch it over into this rule mode and again, get a very clear sentence that makes it uh, obvious exactly what that policy does. Um, so again, keeping with that theme, working towards usability and convention over configuration. And I'll turn it over to Derek to talk about DAST. Sorry, my computer was uh, having some issues switching over. All right, so uh, with DAST, I'm gonna talk about a little bit how we are approaching usability and trying to make uh, the usability of configuration for DAST scans a little bit easier in uh, for the on-demand scans initially, and then switching that over to the CI-CD pipeline scans as well. Uh, so the first thing that we are doing is to uh, make the scanner profile available uh, to everyone. So we are introducing this in 13.4. Uh, we're gonna be starting with a uh, very minimal version of this and start adding fields uh, in here as we go through the subsequent uh, milestones. But the first thing we're doing is being able to add options for the timeouts uh, so that you can get better configuration of how the scanner is acting on your website. Uh, so that's the first thing that we're doing in order to make configuration easier. The next thing we're doing is to add a validation option into the site profile that's available now. Uh, so this will allow you to validate that you own your site, which will help with uh, these scans with DAS that are potentially dangerous to your site since they're running on a uh, actual deployed application, if these are done on a production type site, they could actually cause uh, either data issues or a uh, vulnerability being exploited on the actual uh, production site. So the possibilities here would be meta tag, text file, or header validation. And all of these will allow you to specifically allow a DAS scan on that site. Otherwise, the scan will actually fail. Uh, so these are the two main things that we're, we're working on right now in 13.4. And uh, with that, I will go ahead and uh, turn it over to Taylor. Hey, everyone. I've got two themes to talk about with our static application security testing, also known as SAST. Um, the first one is security for everyone. And let me just share my screen here. We've got, so we believe that security works best when it's accessible and used by as many people as possible directly within the DevOps lifecycle. As part of our commitment to this, the community stewardship, we have all 15 of our open source ask analyzers available to all GitLab users on all editions. This allows any GitLab user developing any of the 18 supported languages and frameworks we support in SAST to leverage these in their projects. It's never been easier to get started with DevSecOps. The second one is about usability and uh, being critical for security. GitLab SAST now supports a new guided configuration experience. We believe that security is a team effort and this configuration experience makes it easier for non-CI experts to get started with GitLab SAST. This tool helps create a merge request to enable SAST scanning. Um, while leveraging the best configuration practices like using GitLab managed SAS CI templates and properly overriding template settings. Um, this NVC is only the beginning and lays the foundation for us to introduce new configuration options uh, like custom rule sets, which will be the focus for us in 13.4. We also intend to expand this guided experience for our other security scanning tools. And just to show you what that looks like here, we've now got an easy uh, enable option for SAS. You've got some settings to be able to uh, control some of the individual uh, overrides to that template, and then you can create a merge request. Um, and I'll just scroll down and show you, there's links to documentation here so that you've got easy access to that. And if I look at my changes, you'll see that we're correctly including the templates and setting the variables that we passed through there. Um, so that's a quick look at what we're working on. And now I'll hand it off to Nicole for software composition analysis. Hey, so technically SCA includes uh, your container scans, your license compliance, as well as your dependency scans. 
but we're mostly going to be focusing on just the dependency scanning and I'm trying to share the correct screen. I think that worked. Anyway, so what I'm concentrating on is that we have completed all of our P1 S1 bugs, which I'm super stoked about. And we're making a whole bunch of UI improvements because since security is everybody's responsibility, if anybody is frustrated or thwarted by the experience, they're not going to want to incorporate security in. So what I'm concentrated on right now is that the merge request approvals, uh, right now a lot of people are having problems understanding exactly how do I set up the approver groups and what happens. So we've got a new flow going where we're actually going to tell you what branches it applies to, what the group names are, suggest some default groups, and then uh, as we get through to the end here, you can actually grab some more information about what do we mean by this approval group, and so it'll explain to you and link you to the documentation. And of course, we are improving the documentation around security merge request approvals, uh, that workflow, how to enable it, what happens when you enable it, if you've already got a whole bunch of branches open. And so we're hoping that everybody is just much more understanding of how they can leverage this to help protect all of their stuff by making sure that when you introduce a vulnerability, a second person or a specific group of people need to sign off on that. So I'm now going to hand this over to uh, Sam. Hi everyone. Uh, as David mentioned earlier, fuzz testing is one of GitLab's newest categories that we're releasing. And really as we're bringing this out as part of GitLab, one of our key focuses is making sure that it's not only effective, but also that it's usable. We feel that if security products are not usable, you won't get all the value out of them that's possible. So this is one of the key focuses that we're really keeping in mind as we build fuzzing out and bring it to you. And you'll see that in our upcoming release of fuzz testing. To that end, we're doing a couple of things specifically. And one of those is we're making sure that fuzz testing is usable regardless of your tech stack and your application. We already support multiple languages and deployment types today. And so we're adding new options such as Java as part of our upcoming release. To make sure that all of the fuzz testing results are not only easy to add to your app, but also actionable, we're really focused on making sure that everything that fuzz testing finds and produces is visible as part of that same experience you're used to at GitLab. And so I'll share my screen and I'll walk you through some of that right now. So what I'm sharing on my screen now, this is a GitLab CI YAML file, uh, which is used to configure your pipelines. And what this is showing is fuzz testing is just like adding any other scanner inside of GitLab that you're already familiar with. You include a template file, you provide a very straightforward job definition that you can copy out of our product documentation. And that's it. That's all you need to do to add fuzz testing to your project. After that has been added, you'll then start seeing fuzz testing as part of your pipeline, just like any other job. If the fuzz testing finds issues or bugs or vulnerabilities, those are going to be reported just like any other security vulnerability. You can see metadata, you can see a stack trace and more information about the bug. And you can also promote that bug into an issue where you, you can then discuss it with your team, create merge requests to close it just like every other scanner here at GitLab. Additionally, we're also going to be bringing API or behavioral based fuzz testing as part of this upcoming release. And in a similar way, we're going to be surfacing these results just like you would see other GitLab test results. As part of your pipeline, you'll see a test tab and all of those different results from the API fuzzer will be shown there. You can see the original responses, you can see the uh, the responses where mutation has happened and bugs have potentially been found so that you can take the next steps to fixing those and better securing your applications. And with that, I'll pass it to Matt to tell us about Threat Insights. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. So Threat Insights is primarily vulnerability management right now. And this is really sort of the window that you get to look at all of the vulnerabilities and findings that are identified by all these scanners that you've just heard about. So the rest of the secure stage, as they're scanning code in the pipeline, there needs to be a way to actually surface that so that the teams, both the engineering side and the security side can actually take action on those. So let me go ahead and share 
my screen. We can find the right window here. So the primary way that the security teams would do this today is through our various security dashboards. Now, this information is showing you what is in the default branch. So for most projects, this is what would actually be in production. I'm showing you the staging uh, just for kind of an example, but I want to point out that this is actually live on GitLab.com as well. So if you remember back just a few releases ago, a lot of this information wasn't here. So it was pretty basic and it made it harder for the security teams to know what they needed to drill into and when. We've taken a lot of feedback from our own AppSec team, which has actually been using this for several months now and made improvements so that it's easier for them to use this day in and day out. So for example, it's minor little things like the defaults are now just the detected and the confirmed state. So I still have the option to look at items that I've dismissed or have resolved and remediated, but I don't necessarily need to see that when I come to the project or group dashboard for the first time. I've also got it, more information here now, so I can have an indicator of the actual, uh, there's a CVE, in this case, these all have CWEs. It's also telling you there's more information available. A lot of our scanners produce more information than we would always display in an overview like this, but just sort of knowing what's behind it can give you an indication of, hey, I, I wanna look at this a little bit more closely. We've also added other information that's a little bit more future looking. So you may notice that GitLab now appears for all these scanners. These are the ones that we provide and you are, you know, you're welcome to integrate your other third party tools. And in fact, we would encourage that because it really adds to the value of having a single view of everything. And this will give you a quick way to call out where did the scan come from? And eventually you'll see the same kind of thing here. We'll actually call out by vendor as well as the scanning technology used so you can drill into exactly what you need to look at. Now this is a project level security dashboard. We also have something very similar at the group and the instance level. Now for the group and the instance level, there's this sort of combined view. Now you may notice this is a, again, one of the usability questions. There's not a lot of real estate here for the vulnerability list itself. What we're working on doing is actually separating out these widgets, these metrics components into a dedicated and actual dashboard area. We've taken the first steps. Again, this is already live in, in uh, production on gitlab.com. Before there was no left menu here. So we're adding a new left menu for the instance level. So that there's, this is more of kind of a, a security area, if you will. I'll go ahead and show some screenshots of what this will look like but there will be a separate vulnerability list. So you'll notice these are the same two components for now. This is the start of a really a true dedicated dashboard to give you more sort of fingertip insights about overall instance and project health. And then the vulnerability list will carry over. Now this one is admittedly a little bit out of date because it doesn't include those other columns. So this additional information fields will continue to roll from the project up to the group in the instance level. The idea being that the more information that we can provide from this quick view, the faster and more efficient it's going to be to triage and then ultimately resolve the most important vulnerabilities. So expect these changes and more coming over the next couple of releases from the Threat Insights team. And David, back to you to take us home. Thank you, Matt, and uh, thanks to the team for their great updates. I gotta say, I'm very excited about the things we have going on towards our uh, individual themes and our objectives. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed this video as, as we want to try a new format. Um, as we wrap up here, I also want to highlight that we do have GitLab commit coming up in a couple of weeks. If you're not registered, please do. Uh, we have some really great updates in the product keynote, uh, as well as Sam Kerr and I are presenting fuzzing. And we actually have our director of engineering and defend our distinguished engineer in defend and a customer presenting how defend fits together to give you a defense in depth approach. So again, thank you everyone for, attending and we'll see you again soon.